filled today. Thankful for that. Uh, we do want to welcome everybody here. Um, make yourselves at home. If you need anything, just ask. Uh, it's not a superly big, big complex, so you shouldn't have trouble finding anything. Down the hallways, the restrooms, and uh, a little bit of a, a, an area for uh, some bottles of water and stuff back there. So if you need anything, just make yourself at home. Uh, we are thankful to be here. We're thankful the Lord is blessed in the week. We're thankful uh, that He saved us. Um, I couldn't help but as we were singing that song, Love Lifted Me, just to think about the condition that I was in when the Lord reached down and lifted me up, right? Um, and... I, I sorry for to de- tell Brother Philip I had to take a pause there for a second in the singing and just thank the Lord for lifting me up in my unworthy condition. Um, you know, uh, I know what I was before the Lord saved me, and um, thankful to know that He redeemed me. Um, I want you to take your hymn books and turn back to 581. I think this is very fitting in regards to some of the stuff that we've been going through in the book of Acts. And I couldn't help but think about Paul and Barnabas and some of these guys as we uh, sang this song. But this song very much deals with carrying forth the gospel message and singing about Jesus saves. And you, you, you almost, you hear and you feel the enthusiasm for the gospel uh, when you sing this song. We have heard the joyful sound, Jesus saves. So my question to you is, have you heard it? Have you personally heard that message, Jesus saves? And when I say here, I don't just mean that with these physical ears that you've heard it, but is it personal to you? Has the Lord Jesus Christ called you? Have you turned to Him in repentance and faith and trust and accepted Him as your Savior? Have you heard it? But next, spread the tidings all around. One of the last things that the Lord told His disciples before He left was that He wanted them to carry this throughout Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth, right? That's a command. That is the last thing the Lord Jesus Christ told His disciples before He left. And this song deals with that a lot. You see things like sing above the battle strife. Listen, this world is full of turmoil. This world is full of things to distract us. This world is full of things that pull us away from everything. We're busy. We got a million things going on. And the question is, is can, in spite of all that strife, above the sound and the distraction of all of that, does the message still ring out, Jesus saves, right? Another part talks about to tell to sinners far and wide, Man, we need to carry the gospel message, right? Listen, we come here on Sundays. We sometimes, we talk about, pretty regularly, we talk about the gospel, right? But we, we study the word. We're looking at doctrine. We're looking at practical stuff. We're, what does the word of God have to say to us? We're not just talking about shouting Jesus saves here in this physical building, but as we go throughout our lives and we come in contact with people and we build friendships, and, and we, we interact with people, are we telling them what Jesus Christ did for us and what he can do for them? And I couldn't help but think about what we've been going through in the book of Acts uh, because, man, I tell you what, if you've studied the book of Acts very much at all, it is all about spreading the gospel. Um, and you really see the Lord's working in the early church there in Jerusalem and then as it goes up to the church at Antioch and then as it goes on all these missionary journeys across everywhere at that time, you see the gospel of Jesus Christ spread. And listen, it was no casual thing. We talked last time about Saul who had persecuted the church and the Lord Jesus Christ met him and saved him, and the guy who not long before had been the one who was consenting to Stephen's death 
was hauling people away, obviously some of them to be put in prison, some of them based on Paul's own words later in Acts, to be put to death. And yet that man accepts the Lord Jesus Christ as a Savior and turns around and starts to declare the very message that he had once hated. And it was no casual thing. Listen, Paul understood that much had been forgiven. <laughs> Paul understood that much had been forgiven. Paul understood his condition and what Jesus Christ had done for him. And he had a burning desire to make sure and tell other people about it. We want to make sure that we carry the gospel. And we want to shine a light on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, before I use up all of my time just simply talking about that song and how I think it relates to what we've been talking about, let me give a little bit of a background of what we've been doing for those that are just here for the first time. Uh, we have been going through the New Testament and talking about how does the New Testament quote and use the Old Testament and why, right? Um, oftentimes we think about, and it's, in my opinion, it's false, we think about this idea of there being two different things, the old and the new, but really this is one story, and this is a fulfillment of all of the things that had been talked about in the Old Testament. And what we often find when we read the way that the New Testament uses the Old Testament, it may only quote one, two, three verses, but when you read the whole chapter that it's quoting and the thing that it's dealing with, it is going to give you so much more about what it's teaching in the New Testament. And we've already been through uh, multiple books. We went through the four Gospels. Um, we've already covered uh, Peter. And, and we've, we've hit Romans already, and we've talked about all the places that it used uh, the Old Testament. Now, what I don't like to do is to just jump in and grab, okay, there's a verse quoted in chapter 10, verse 5. Let's jump in there and let's read that one quote. And so what we've been doing is we've been going through the entire book talking about um, what's the context of the book? What is the book about? Uh, what is its purpose? And then now, how does that book use the Old Testament? And how does that further expand our knowledge of what is being said? And so where we're at now, we're kind of in this in-between place. Uh, there's been a lot of quotes in Acts. And we come up to chapter 9 where we see the conversion of Saul. Uh, and then really, there's not a lot of quotes until you get into chapter 13. Interestingly enough, it's this guy, Saul, who's doing the quoting when you get to chapter 13. Um, and, and he's actually quoting some of the same things that the Apostle Peter quoted on the day of Pentecost and shortly thereafter, which is very interesting. But what I don't want to do is just suddenly skip 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, because listen, if you go to chapter 13 and you suddenly see Paul preaching in Antioch, and he's quoting some of the things, thing, same things Peter does, you're going to lose some context there because when we ended last time, Saul was persecuting and consenting to the death of Stephen. Um, and so you really have to kind of uh, at least review these chapters. I'm going to try to go through them. You guys know me well enough to know that it won't be that quick. But I'm going to try to go through these chapters quicker than I would uh, if, if we were digging super deep, okay? Um, but we're in Acts chapter 9, about halfway through. We've already covered uh, Saul being redeemed. Uh, he has been baptized now, and he has been teaching at Damascus. Uh, interestingly enough, the guy that was, the, that was persecuting is now having to be snuck out of the city of Damascus by putting in a basket and lowered down out of the wall because guess what? The people there want to kill him just like he wanted to kill those that were talking about Jesus Christ. And that's where we pick up uh, in verse 26 of Acts chapter 9. And we're going to go ahead and read down to the end of the chapter. Understand that there's some back and forth here. A little bit of it's talking about Saul. And then we're going to switch over to Peter for a little bit. But one thing that you're going to learn about the book of Acts is oftentimes if you just read Acts in little snippets, 
you're going to think that there's a whole bunch of little unrelated stories, but that's actually not the way of the book of Acts works. Acts builds on itself and it introduces something which is then going to be able to expand the next part, right? Uh, as you've covered all the way up to Acts chapter 9, you've realized that, hey, you know what? The church grew and then they needed to get these seven, what we would call deacons, and one of them was Stephen and one of them was Philip. Listen, there's no mistake that it suddenly introduced these two guys because then the whole next couple chapters are about who? Stephen and Philip. Well, that seems like those are separate stories. No, when you introduce Stephen, you actually get introduced to the idea of Saul and where he was and the persecution that came. Well, Philip's story is separate. No, the persecution of, of Saul caused Philip and others to be dispersed from Jerusalem. And Philip went preaching the gospel everywhere. And by the way, when we get to the end of chapter 9 and Peter is in a place called Joppa, you're going to find that there's already believers in Joppa. By the way, Joppa is a town that Philip, as he went down to preach to the Ethiopian eunuch, as he would have went up, and it says he went up preaching the gospel up all the way between the towns of where he was all the way up to Caesarea. Joppa is halfway between the place where Philip was when he preached to the eunuch and where he ends up in Caesarea. Listen, Acts builds on itself and continues to build. The other piece that we're going to learn here in a little bit is this is still in a lot of ways preparing um, Theopolis to fully understand the mission work of Paul because although this chapter suddenly turns to start being about Peter, it's going to be about Peter and his introduction to a guy by the name of Cornelius who is a Gentile and it introduces the fact that it was an original disciple who went to the church at Jerusalem and said, hey, Gentiles are being saved. And then suddenly now you're going to start to see that Paul is going to go to the Gentiles. So there's just a whole lot of stuff and it really builds upon itself. So Acts chapter 9, starting in verse 26. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples. But they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them among... Uh, uh, he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. And he spoke boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians. But they went about to slay him, which when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. And it came to pass as Peter passed through all quarter, throughout all quarters, he came down also to the saints which dealt at Lydia. And there he found a certain man named Ananias, which had kept his bed eight years and was sick of the palsy. And Peter said unto Ananias, Jesus Christ, make thee whole, arise and make thy bed. And he arose immediately, and all that dwelt in Lydda and Saron saw him and turned to the Lord. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died, whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. And for as much as Lydda was nigh to Joppa, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there. They sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them. And when he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber. And all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed and turned and turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and widows, presented her alive. And it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And it came to pass that he tarried many days in Joppa with one Simon, a tanner. Now we're going to end reading there because I know myself well enough to know that we're not going to make it even that far. Okay, But uh, understand this is again not a separate story that's just different from the rest of what's going on in Acts. 
It is the Lord's plan that Paul ends up in Joppa at the house of Simon the Tanner. He just happened to be in Lydda when Tabitha passed away. And they came and got him. And while he had raised her, he stayed there. Well, listen, that is preparing us for the introduction of one Cornelius. Because since Paul was in Lydda and close enough to Joppa, he now comes to Joppa. Now that he's in Joppa, he's close enough to Caesarea, which is where Cornelius is, right? So this stuff starts to build on, its st- on itself. But again, we're, I'm getting ahead of myself. We're going to back up just a little bit. So let's talk about Saul for just a second. Saul and Barnabas. Uh, if you have studied the book of Acts very much, those are two names that go together very well. Um, Barnabas and Saul were on their, uh, they really did that first missionary journey. And listen, uh, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ spread and spread far and wide. Barnabas is a neat guy. Now, unfortunately, uh, we know that at some point in this ministry, Barnabas and Saul part ways. uh, And to some degree, they part ways because of the type of person that Barnabas was, even reflected in this passage here. Um, If you remember, Barnabas was introduced to us earlier in like the very end of Acts chapter 4, I think it was. This is a guy who is full of the Holy Ghost. Uh, He is known as the son of consolation. He's a guy that cares about other people. And he is going to be a guy that's going to be selfless. And he's going to be a guy that's going to give people an opportunity and a chance. He actually sold off a bunch of his possessions and gave it to the apostles to distribute to people in need. That's the kind of guy that Barnabas is. He is a very trusted guy. Listen, there are times when things that are going on in other places and the, and the church at Jerusalem sends Barnabas to go check it out, right? That's the kind of guy that Barnabas is. You see here, though, that Saul, who last time he was in Jerusalem, uh, not exactly a friend to the, the believers, right? Um, I almost said to the Christians, but understand that at this point in time, they actually weren't called Christians, um, right? But listen, Saul is coming back to Jerusalem. Saul has a reputation, right? What is his reputation? Well, he was consenting to the death of Stephen. And he went in and he started ripping people out of their homes. And he got papers that would allow him to go to Damascus and bring believers back to Jerusalem to be put on trial. What do you think the believers at Jerusalem remember about Saul? That. That's what they remember. How could you ever accept that guy back into the fold? Hey, look, even if he's kind of become a believer, he has probably been part of the effort that has caused imprisonment or even death to people that you knew. We talked about that last time. Hey, Philip and Stephen more than likely knew each other. They were two of the seven But yet years later, Philip actually has Paul into his home and keeps him at his home. You talk about the amazing forgiveness that the Lord Jesus Christ allows us to have, right? Whenever we see what he's done for us, listen, we are called to be like him. Can you imagine what it would be like to be like Philip, who has this guy who used to persecute and even consented to the death of some of your friends, but now you're inviting him into your home? Well, put yourself in the shoes of the people at Jerusalem at this point. Paul hasn't done all these missionary journeys yet. Paul hasn't made a name known for himself other than in Damascus and maybe in Arabia. He comes to Jerusalem And he tries to be a part, right? Man, he's a believer. Man, he's been preaching the gospel up there at Damascus. And man, he's even started to suffer some of the same persecution. And he comes to Jerusalem and it says that he tries to to become a part. Well, guess what? Nobody wants anything to do with him. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. In verse 27, we see Barnabas again. It says, but Barnabas 
took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and they had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Barnabas here is a guy, again, who has been proven time and time again that he is willing to give people an opportunity. Barnabas also happens to be a trusted, very trusted person at Jerusalem. And when Barnabas comes with Saul by his side, apparently, and says, listen, let me tell you about the testimony of this guy that you once knew. He is different. He has been changed. There is only one thing that changes somebody as much as this guy's been changed. And that's the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he tells them about how that Saul has been saved. And he tells them how that Saul has been preaching the gospel at Damascus. And it's because of Barnabas that the people at Jerusalem suddenly start to accept Saul. Can you imagine that though? I mean, just seriously, just stop and think about that for a minute. Whew. Takes a lot.